Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us in Adventures into Reality. Today it will just be me, Kathy Ma. Andrew Bartzitz, the Galactic Historian, is on site, on location, preparing for his great event in September, which we're all super excited about and looking forward to. For those of you that are already signed up, I look forward to seeing you there because I will also be there. It really is going to be just such a wonderful, wonderful event. And for those of you who don't know, Andrew is offering a free video series called Living the Mystical Life Daily. He shows you some tools and gives you knowledge about how to have mystical experiences in your everyday life. So sign up for free at andrewbartsis.com. Just put your name and email when you get to the page and you'll receive the first video right away. Again, just get it at andrewbartsis.com and enter your name and email to receive the Living the Mystical Life Daily series. And remember, you can get a private session with Andrew or myself by contacting Tanok at Tanok at GalacticHistorian.com. That's T-E-N-O-C-H at GalacticHistorian.com. And we'll be able to get to the bottom of your issues and help you see a better way ahead. So go ahead and contact Tanok at Tanok at GalacticHistorian.com. So in a few moments, we will open the phone lines um, and the Skype lines to take callers. For those of you that aren't sure which people to contact, you can either Skype in to Laura Lee Solomon, and when you do so, you must request her to add to contact so she can add you before you can get put through. Or you can call 1 for US, 956-217-0261, or the station, which is 1 for US, 347-688-2902. And um, I've had a few questions about uh, my website, which is very exciting. Thank you all for being so supportive. My website being kathyspearlsofwisdom.com. And I've had a few questions about me being nominated by Time Magazine for Hong Kong's Most Corporate Psychic. So I'll just say a few words about that. It was probably one of the most exciting times of my life to be nominated by Time Magazine. Um, having grown up in a generation where it wasn't really that much online, it was all magazines. Time magazine was the bomb. So to be in any way included was the most exciting thing ever. And to be nominated or to be named as the most corporate psychic in Hong Kong, that was very, very exciting because it was like, you know, I've arrived. I, I guess it's like being acknowledged, even though you know you're acknowledged and that you have your clients and you have uh, a certain amount of standing to actually see it in print um, was really, really exciting. And the the one thing I probably found most fun about that was being able to explore so many different businesses. Um, you know, each person's business and work as well is so interesting. They all have different challenges, different issues, different deals to be done, different people to negotiate with. And to be able to share in that with people and give them insight into which way to go, which pitfalls to avoid, which small print they really need to pay attention to, which deals are going to make money, which deals probably won't make money but might have a ulterior motive why you want to go ahead with them, which deals to avoid. Um, it was very, very uh, rewarding, I suppose, in many ways to watch my own clients grow their businesses and then hear their stories about that as well. Um, wow. So anyway, if you want to learn more about that or me, please check out my website at kathyspearlsofwisdom.com. Um, and for those of you that tuned in yesterday for charting your course, I'm sorry that I wasn't there. Unfortunately, as some of you already know, I have an internal battle with spiders. So I had more spider bites, uh, which ended up with hives and in emergency in hospital. So it was a bit of a, a drama time. Uh, never having had hives before, that was a new experience that I really think I would prefer not to have repeated. <laughs> but it did give me uh, insight into when you're at that moment where you can't breathe and you're thinking that this could be the moment. I really thought that maybe my life would flash in front of my eyes, but turns out it wasn't that. It was more, I think I'm either going to die or I'm going to have to have something put in my throat to let me breathe. I actually thought that when I 
encountered that moment, it would be a much more spiritual, enriching moment for me. But it turns out panic does take over and then rationale sits in. So the one thing I did learn about this is no matter what happens, my mind will fall back on logic and find a way to, mm, I guess, survive or find a way to grab someone who will help me survive. Not necessarily so lofty in the old, I might see a, a dark tunnel, oh no, sorry, not dark, a bright tunnel coming or this or that. So that was very interesting. Um, and I really would be interested to hear anyone's stories if they've had stories where they're at that moment where they think things might happen, they might pass on, and what was their experience? Because mine was absolutely nothing at all what I thought it would be. Um, so just putting it out there, if any of you want to share your story, please do call in today and let's talk about it. And so let's go on to the first caller. We have Kirsten. Are you there? Kirsten? I think you'll have Good to morning. unmute. Sorry. <laughs> Thought I did. Sorry. Welcome to the show, Kirsten. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Ooh, lovely place. And mm -hmm. what can we do for you today? Well, I'm actually kind of excited to have you as the business guru um, because a question that I would have for you is my husband and I had the opportunity to purchase a business. Um, I took over April 1st, 100%. I say, uh, I'll be saying me because although we purchase it together, it's, it's my thing. I do it. Um, so what it is, is I purchased a business that makes organic, um, free trade, raw, dark chocolate, vegan and gluten free. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a lot of fun with it and I'm really, really enjoying it. But I find myself, I'm at the point where I need an employee, but I can't afford to pay anyone. And I just wanted to maybe know your insight as to where this might be going and suggestions. Currently, it's farmer's markets that I sell at, and then I have about seven retail locations. Mm -hmm. I would love to get out of farmer's markets and just bump up my retail mm -hmm. and do that instead. Mm. When I look at your product, I really do like it, but I think you need to add something to it. Are you, have you been playing with the formula of it? I haven't because the lady that I bought it from um, developed it on her own and she did extremely well with it as a single person. She was able to you know, support herself, pay her bills and people love her product and there's really nothing I could do to improve upon it. I have had suggestions and I've had things rolling around in my head about um, bringing in some new flavors. Um, but one of the challenges is that it is a vegan product and I want to keep it vegan because there's no need for chocolate to have animal products in it. So, mm -hmm. and, and so like if I added, say, a salted caramel, well, to make caramel creamy, it requires milk. I just haven't had time yet to experiment with other ingredients mm -hmm. because it's, oh. there's 11 different flavors and I'm just kind of treading water, keeping up with the, the demand that I have. <laughs> okay. Um, well, number one, I think you can add something to your product. To me, it looks like you've got something in your mind. I don't think you just mentioned it then. So I'll just leave that with you in the background because possibly it's a secret ingredient you don't want us to know about anyway. <laughs> I think I don't know yet either. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, it's something small and it's something that I would probably say is more like a liquid form than anything. Um, and it would totally fit in with the requirements that you have. So I'll just leave that bit with you. Um, when I look at your distribution and what you're doing at the moment, I think you're v it is very limiting in the farmer's markets that you're doing at the moment. Um, one of the things that you really need to, uh, I suppose, consider is do you have relationships with like health food shops in your area? Um, I'm a little hesitant to approach some of them right now um, because hmm, I don't have a barcode yet. I haven't taken my product to the lab to have it um, analyzed for, you know, the nutritional panel info that they put on it. And mm -hmm. from what I've been told, that costs a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm still at the beginning of it, I, I definitely make enough money to, um, you know, repurchase supplies for the next, you know, week or two and then, you know, pay some bills, feed my, my kids, things like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not at the point yet where I'm making so much money I can put out big expenditures for things like that. Okay. Well, in that case, why don't you consider still going some, try to, trying to do something with the health food type of shop. Um, look at the ones with the cafe because they 
to when I look at this, I think this is something that people can put on the counter. Um, and you know, like when you go to um, like Starbucks, they have all the biscuits and uh, mints and whatever paraphernalia near the counter, and it's like an impulse buy. That's the type of thing where I think you will find more success. It's the impulse buy. Um, and to me, it doesn't look like you need coding or, and stuff like that to be put on things like a counter. So I, I would like you to think about that, see if you can approach a few people and give this concept to them. Because I think you will find that they are very receptive to it because they also have been looking for things that are slightly different to put out. Um, and I don't think it's as complicated as you might think it is. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is in terms of getting someone to help you. I think at this point, it's still a bit early days. I know you're working quite hard, so it is a bit tough. But I think at the moment, it's too difficult in terms of finances, um, however you want to work it, to get someone to help you. Um, let me see. We're in August now. So I'd say by the time you reach around mm, end of September, uh, to November. Those are the times where you could most likely find someone who would like to work for you part-time that you can afford. Before then, I think it's going to be very difficult because it's just, mm, number one, it's the money. Number two, it seems to be a small liability issue. So I'm really not sure how that comes in. So possibly whoever is around that might be wanting to help would need a lot of um benefits or um, insurance or etc. So mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't worry about that so much at the moment. In terms of your own development for the business, I think one of the things you really need to start to think about is how can you effectively use your time to produce this item? Because to me, whatever process you're doing that you make this item, you have not streamlined your process. So no. I'd like you to think about how you can streamline it. And even though you might think streamlining it is um, gives away takes away from the creativity, I think you'll find that it doesn't. It's just a different way of doing it, but it is no less mm, uh, putting yourself into the product. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I do think every single day about how I can streamline it, and I know how I can. But then I get orders in, and they want four of this, and eight of that, and ten of those, and three of these, and I maybe <laughs> can only fill part of that. So that I'm making a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of that. So yes, I, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it just doesn't always seem to be a reality on that day or that week. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult because it's not even about discipline. It's about time. But the more you do try and streamline, even if you have to give up a little bit of business just to streamline it, it's worth it in the long run. So think of it more like your end goal rather than your short goal. Yeah. Well, I did give up a market last week. I canceled one of my evening markets. It's only a two-hour market, and it's not a huge money maker. But I make money. But I didn't. I wasn't going to have any product for my weekend market, which is a really big one. If I did that evening during the week, and so for sanity, I just had to say no. So I am, you know, I do know a few limitations. But at the same time, I feel like with the markets, I'm just really treading water. They are decent money, but I would like to be more in the, you know, retail wholesale end of it and just work in my kitchen because mm -hmm. going to markets, if anybody does farmer's markets, they know it's, um, it's probably harder just to do the markets than it is to do your, your daily production. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very time consuming and it takes a lot of energy, at least for me anyways. Mm. No, I mean, I, I totally can see that. But I think you will find that once you do streamline that process and, you know, it's not going to be easy to get that system in, in, in place, how we say. But once you do, your production will go up. It's just a question of biting the bullet and getting to that place. Mm -hmm. And because you're on your own, it's even harder because, you know, obviously you do like things like sleep. <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> or, or living. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um one of the things I would suggest to you that could be a, a possible easier way to get there is why don't you consider having a weekend where you invite five friends to come over and help you just because they're your friends. Because well, when people are asked to step up 
and really help you so that you can start to streamline it. It gives you a break so that you can concentrate on something else and then keep going back to it. Yeah, I do, I do have um, people that have uh, offered to help. The problem is, is that if they don't have their food safe, they can't be in my kitchen. I do have my two teenage boys. They both have their food safe, and they were a huge help to me on Friday, both of them, to get me ready for Saturday's market. So, um, yes, I absolutely see what you're talking about. Hmm. It's just a question of trying to make it work, you know, and it, nothing ever, no, how I put this, nothing good is usually easy. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> quite well. <laughs> but there is, is there, when I look at your project and what you're doing, there is ways to do it. So I would definitely, bit by bit, explore these and just keep thinking to yourself, streamline, streamline, streamline. I also want you to consider packaging. Um, I think you really need to change whatever it is that you're using for packaging. Um, I think something with a little bit more color would go better. Yeah. Can I explain the packaging thing to you yes. just quickly? Because that is, yes, I, I do want to change the packaging. And when customers um, found out that I, you know, purchased the business and I asked people, you know, what do you think could be different? And packaging came up. However, um, this business has a definite vibe to it as far as the product. And the packaging that I'm still, I'm using the same packaging as the lady that I bought it from. It is um, wood cellulose. So it's, and it's a clear like wood cellulose bag. So it's compostable, which means it's not plastic, and if you don't recycle it, it's not going to pollute the environment. And I feel very strongly in keeping with that because, mm -hmm. again, it's the whole vibe of the product. I buy organic and fair trade because there's a huge child slave labor market when it comes to chocolate. 95% of the chocolate out there that you purchase used three- and four- and five-year-olds, ten-year-olds to harvest it, and they're treated horribly. Fair trade means the uh, farmer got paid fairly so they can also turn around and pay their bills. So along with the packaging, I just feel very strongly to do something that's earth friendly and doesn't create um, something negative in the environment just because someone wanted to consume uh, a good product. So mm -hmm. I'm somewhat limited, but if there's anybody out there that knows of something that would work, I'm absolutely open to look at it. Absolutely. Well, there you go. Anyone out there, if you have any information or any ideas, when the replay of this comes out, please put something in the comments so Kirsten can have a look. That would be Thank very, you. very helpful. Do you have a, like a little tag that describes your product that's attached well, to the... I have a label. I just use um, just uh, like a mailing label front and back and the front talks about, you know, that it's got no fillers, no GMOs, no waxes, no this, no that. Um, you know, kind of its attributes, and then on the back is the ingredients and contact information and date that it was made. There's a six-month shelf life, so I just put the date that it was made because people like to know that when, when exactly it was made. Do you put, like, uh, little cards next to it, you know, like name card size that explains your product a little bit? Um, not really, and I do want to work on some signage, but again, because um, it was just kind of like roll up your sleeves and dig in, I haven't really had much time to do more than just make the chocolate and get it out the door. Um, mm -hmm. I've got all these ideas in my head. I do have a, um, a little pamphlet, just a two-sided pamphlet uh, with some basic information on it that people can take if they choose, and then I have my business cards along with the information on the front and back of the label of each bar. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I know well, I do need to work on signage. Absolutely, I know that. It's, it's something that even if you could write down your main basic points that you want in it and then delegate that to someone else. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm also one of those people that thinks if I want it done the way I want it, i got to do it myself. <laughs> Yes, but you also have to face the reality that you don't have that much time. So if you want it done at all, you might have to enlist some help. <laughs> you can always amend things later, but you do need some help. Mm -hmm. By the time you keep waiting till you're free, you know, another few months have passed when something could have already been done. Even if it isn't exactly perfect the way you want it, it's better than having nothing. Having information out there is better than having no information out there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's very difficult when it's your own product. It's very difficult not to want to control every single aspect of it. 
But the truth is, the minute the product grows, you can no longer keep control over ever, every single aspect. You really do have to delegate some things. Yes, I agree. But that's a challenge that you can think about. <laughs> You know, at least why don't you write the bullet points down of what you think needs to be in it and just see what someone else comes up with. I mean, you might be pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Lots to think on. Yeah, I could, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great day to be thinking about new stuff. Well, I think about new stuff every day. Mm. But that's mm. while I'm still, you know, making the the regular stuff. I'm always thinking about how I can improve and make different and make prettier and more attractive. Um, I have to say, however, my customers aren't ones that need a lot of fanfare. And mm -hmm. um, but I have had the comments about uh, different coloring on the package, only because every bar, although each one says. Um, what the flavor is right on front, they all look the same because it's just black and white. So they tend to miss the fact that they're all different. So mm -hmm. yes, through my observations, I absolutely agree. I do need to work on the labeling. It's just, just that time factor. You also have to consider that sometimes the feedback that you don't get is also important. Like even though you have customers that buy it and they're already happy with it, they may pass this product on to someone else. They may, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. may buy some and give it to their mother, their sister, their brother who know nothing. And so yeah. any bit of information is helpful. Of, yeah, I do have a lot of people that purchase it for gifts. I have a little gift pack that's got um, uh, 10 different flavors in it. So, I mean, whether you want that for yourself because you want all 10 or you want to give it as a gift. But no, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Other people are getting the product, not just the person that bought it. Mm, mm. Well, that's a lot for you to think about. That really mm -hmm. is. Is there some other issue that you would like to talk about as well? Um, sure. I have been doing an epic cleanse. Um, mm -hmm. I'm on day 80 of a 92-day cleanse. And um, I happen to have someone in my life that's very intuitive. And he was able to, you know, talk to my higher self and say, yep, you're going to finish it. You're going to do the whole thing. You're going to complete all 92 days and it's going to be great. Well, in the middle of the night last night, I had to go throw up. <laughs> and there wasn't much because I'm only consuming juice. Mm -hmm. And I still feel really green right now. So I consulted with this person and said, what the heck is going on? And I'm being told that it's, it's time. It's, it's, I'm, I'm done. But at the same time, I'm conflicted because I'm so close to the end. And it isn't that I'll feel defeated. I know I won't because I've done an amazing thing for my body. I just don't want to. See, it's going to take me about six days to get back on to regular eating. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just don't want to, like, knee-jerk reaction it. And, and you know, it's, I'm only 12 days from the end. I'd like to stick with it if I can. But right now, I don't feel very good at all. I can tell you that much. Mm. And number one thing is for this cleanse is always listen to your body, do what your body needs. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to, um, like I say, jump to a, a reaction just because of a few hours of not feeling great because detoxing, you are not, you don't expect to feel great. It is a difficult process. But mm. for the most part, I've been okay for this last 80 days. Mm. And so I'm a little bit murky over what it was that made you feel unwell. Um, back in January and February of this year, I felt absolutely horrible. Um, oh, that's the music for coming up with the ad. Can you just hold on, Kirsten, and we'll come back to this after the music? Yes, thank you. Thank you. There, where we were all disconnected, but we're back now. So today, it's just me, Kathy Ma. Andrew Bartzis, the amazing galactic historian, is on location doing all sorts of pre-event things for his event in September. So that will be very exciting when that comes on. And for those of you who are interested in a private session and that want to go deeper with your questions with either Andrew or myself, go ahead and call the office now at 1 for US 360 8940692 and they will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Again, the number for a one-on-one -on -one session with Andrew or myself is 1 for US 360-894-0692. And for all of those callers that may have got disconnected, 
Laura will be trying to connect you back. Sorry about that. Um, Kirsten, are you still there? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Great. So you were telling us something in January? Well, yeah, the reason why I felt that I wanted to do this cleanse. Um, so for a while now, my health hasn't been great. Now, let me qualify. I'm not dying. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there that are worse off than me. But I'm very much about um, seeing something that's wrong, not, not going great in my body. And instead of running for a pharmaceutical or running to the doctor, I, you know, choose to do a course correction through diet and lifestyle. So I was having like everything I ate, whether it was the cleanest food possible or the worst junk food, everything gave me heartburn. All day, all night, I was hardly sleeping. Um, the nights that I didn't have heartburn, I wasn't sleeping anyways. Um, I think I had an uh, extreme candida overgrowth, which was causing me great pain in different areas in my body. So I kind of intuitively knew that this was something that I, I, I could do. I mean, I didn't have to. There's many other ways you can heal. But for me, it's simple because I know myself. And if I'm going to say I'm going to not have sugar, I'm not going to have bread, I'm not going to have this, that, and the other thing, that might last two days. And then somebody invites you out for dinner or you're having a busy day and you're on the run and you go through the drive through So I know mm -hmm. for me... I need to be more extreme about it. And that's why I chose a juice cleanse. And I have done this juice cleanse before. I made it to 89 days. Um, and I felt fantastic. But I'm armed with different knowledge this time. So I tell people it wasn't the cleanse that failed. It was me. I did a really good clean out of my body. And then I didn't take it seriously. And I you know, found myself you know, not doing well again. So I guess one of the reasons why to find out that it's time for me to quit this when I'm only 12 days away is because I had in my mind this plan. <laughs> okay, so right? is it just yesterday you started to feel sick and did a bit of throw up? It was the middle so of the night. I woke up about 1.30 and I guess I laid there and denied it for a while, but eventually I just had to get out of bed. And there, I didn't throw up much. There's really nothing, but... Right, right. And I well, still don't feel great right now. Okay, well, one of the things I'm seeing when I look at your energy is that you seem very low in your electrolytes. Have you been taking supplements for that? Well, I mean, I drank tons of juice, so I shouldn't be low on electrolytes, but I do have one drink specifically that I kind of fall back on when life is busy that would definitely make up for that that I could go back to. Lately, I've just been having a lot of pineapple and orange juice. Okay. Well, for me, when I look at what's going on for you, it's like your electrolyte levels are low. If you can push those levels back up and get the energy back up, I think you'll find that you're right as rain. But you need to address that issue. So I don't think that having to stop your cleanse necessarily is the answer. More boost up your electrolyte levels because I think that's the, the, the one thing that you need. Yeah, I can do that easily. Because mm, I'm sure once you do that, just do a big fix for today, you will just feel like a new person. You really will. That would be nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. But you will, you will notice that that makes a big difference for you. So I would yeah. definitely go with that. Okay. Yeah. Don't jump to the other conclusions yet. Just see that because I think by t if you do this today, by tonight you're already going to feel a lot better. Yeah. Well, like I, it does take me six days to wean back on to solid foods. So, mm. um, but I don't want to start that process if it's not a hundred percent necessary. So I'll definitely um, do what you say and uh, yeah. whip up the other drink that does have tons of electrolytes in it. Good. Good. Great. Okay, and so is it that Shane wanted to talk to us today as well? Yep, he's sitting right beside me, but we wanted to kind of do it separately. So I'll hand okay. over to you. Thanks, All Kat. right. Thank you so much for calling, Kirsten. Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi, Shane. Uh, so I called a while back uh, but with you and Andrew. Um, mm -hmm. talking. We, I were, was to get uh, cranial... Cranial... Uh, cranial. Mm-hmm. I've been doing that, and I've noticed quite a few changes, uh, some of which Andrew had listed uh, back in the call. Would you like to list and the changes for us so that we can all see where, where you've gone? Well, that fog of war that he mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. that's pretty much gone. Um, 
I've gotten a lot more confident. Excellent. And I can just focus easier. Hmm. How do you feel within yourself? Uh, do you feel like you have more inner strength, more control over what you're doing? Yeah. Good. That's good. Because that's important for you to be able to feel that, not only just know it, but to feel it. Mm -hmm. And so I've also been learning and from dragons. Uh, what mm. do you think? That would have been awesome. What, do you, what is your overall take on all that? Uh, I've been learning a whole lot. Um, uh, Which part of it interested you the most? I don't know. I just walked into the store one day, saw a book that had dragons, and um, then I picked that one up, and mm -hmm. yeah, it, it helped me learn more about dragons. Mm. Did the, the stuff that Andrew has talked about, about dragons, really resonate with you? Mm, I don't think I've heard that one. Mm. Um, well, do check out his website, andrewbartsis.com, because he has a lot of information about dragons. Um, he unfortunately isn't here today because he would love to hear your feedback, but he will hear this on the replay, so that, that's also really good. One of the things when I look at your energy and I see that your awareness is awakening is that you have a lot of questions about where you, I guess where you're coming from, where you've been, where you're going, what is the whole point of all this in a way. It, it's like you're looking at the very big questions um, and they're like almost too big to face because they're just too big. Um, and what I'll say to you about that is when you start to think about things like that and the information that you start to read and learn is don't get too daunted by the fact that it's such a big topic, it's such um, enormous uh, amount of content to um, reconcile within yourself. Think of it more like every time you read something, every time you learn something, it's just like a little awakening in your mind and it's waking up something that has been dormant inside your head and it might not necessarily make complete sense to you but something about it makes you feel good and that's what you really need to focus on sometimes you don't need to know why you just need to know it's good and when you can feel more confident about knowing more and it feeling good for yourself, then you can start to explore things like why does this particular thing about it make me interested? Why does all that not make it me interested, but this particular thing? What, For example, why is it that this um, spirit of energy that comes with the dragon is interesting, yet where its history is from is really not so interesting? You know, it's things like this. It's Think about it like you have a lot of information going on in your head and you just need to filter out what is important to you right now. It doesn't matter about everything else. It doesn't even matter if some of it doesn't make sense. What resonates with you and makes you feel good and makes you think, oh, you know what, that, that, I don't understand it, but that seems right. And it's those little things that will keep spurring you on to seek more. And then, by default, you will start to understand more. Don't get too daunted by the topic is too big. Does that make sense for you? Okay. You have a question for me? No, actually. I mainly had questions for Andrew. But, uh -huh. uh, the galactic questions. Uh, sorry. <laughs> well... Andrew will be back next week and he, all things galactic will be revealed to us. So maybe you'll just have to hold on to your questions and wait till he's back in the show. Yeah, we will do. Thanks. Thank you so much for calling and contacting us, Shane. And it's great to know that you're making progress and great to know that you did go ahead with the cranial sacral because that really will make a big difference to you. Even in just clearing your head, as you say, you have a little bit more focus. Just little things like that can make such a big difference in someone's life that everything doesn't seem as hard.
or as challenging. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling. I hope you have a great day and we'll catch you again next time. Thanks. All right, then. Bye. Wow, what an interesting call. It's really great to be able to talk to Shane again. No doubt Andrew will have some very interesting things to say when he talks to him again next time. Our next caller is uh, 405. Are you there? 405? Hello? Hi. What is your name and where are you calling from? My name is Melissa and I'm calling from Oklahoma. Hi, Melissa. What kind Hi, of Kathy, you how are today? you? I'm good, thank you. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Um, I guess nervous? one of the questions <laughs> I've been trying to get through, and I was just, wow, I'm surprised and, and, <laughs> and very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> it's your um, day today. <laughs> I guess. Very nice. You know, one of the questions that I have is um, I've been feeling disconnected lately like I'm um, spiritually disconnected mm -hmm. and a lot of things have changed in my life within the last year. Um, and I just kind of want to know if what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I mean that from a, like a spiritual standpoint, from a, you know, life path. Um, if you need more information, I can give you some more. Mm, why don't you give us a little bit more information? Well, my fiancé and I, oh, about a year ago, we decided that we wanted to buy a piece of land, build mm -hmm. a very modest house, and then try to live off the land as much as possible. You know, my ultimate goal is to be sovereign, completely sovereign. Mm -hmm. um, and in the process, we both had lost our jobs um, and kind of are at a standstill right now. We're staying in a... 22 foot travel trailer and you know we have places around our property that we've built up you know chicken coop but we haven't had the house started yet mm -hmm. um in in the process and I don't know if it's just because so much is going on around me um but I I feel like I'm a little bit spiritually disconnected you know I used to work with people with developmental disabilities which is one of my passions but now I'm no longer in that field and I'm kind of just sitting at home and I'm trying to embark on um, some art that I've been playing with the last two years, some painting and jewelry making. Mm -hmm. um, so I have this, you know, wonderful plan in my head and how it's supposed to feel. But in the process, I just felt, you know, Mm, mm. spiritually disconnected if that makes sense like yeah. not like I did when I first awakened and obviously I fell asleep again but um I don't know I guess I'm just looking for some advice mm. have you oh, with this piece of land that you bought did you do the um land revocations with it did I do the what the land revocations, like, you know, honoring your ancestors and all that have yes. lived on the land. Yes, I did. How yes, did that feel when you did that? Um, wonderful. <laughs> it felt like, um, how do I just, how do I say it? It felt like a weight has been lifted. You mm -hmm. know, it, not like it was ever heavy. The feeling was ever heavy here to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, but after I did it, I felt energized that whole entire week. I mean, I also said all of Andrew's contract soul revocations, all of them at once, but that one was the one where, um, I think I felt the most energized. Mm -hmm. Did you do it more than once? For the land one, I think I did it twice mm -hmm. or at least a part, a part of it the second time. Okay. Well, I would like, to, the first thing, I would like you to do that again. Um, okay. And think of it as more like this. It's once you do it, I'm sure when I look at your energy, to me, it looks like you felt like you had come home. Um, yeah. And it's that true. bonding with the land 
and the ancestors that are related to it. That is what I really like for you. That connection, that energy, because you will draw strength on this all throughout the year. So the more that you do it, the more powerful it will become and the more energy you will draw from it. And okay. when I say the more you do it, I don't mean every day or day. <laughs> you know, like when you feel drawn. Um, because right. for you at the moment, there's just so much, um, I guess, state of flux, we'll call it. What's been happening for you and um, your partner, uh, fiancé, is that there's so much life change going on that it's very confusing and your own energies are getting confused because, you know, like some days you have high days, some days you have low days and that's just the way it is right. for everyone. It's not uh, unique to you. Uh, don't feel that you have done something wrong or you're not doing enough of something in that sense. It's just a, a state of... Mm, state of the year you know t this year mm -hmm. is year of the monkey okay so right everything is a challenge um and in your case the monkey is really just dancing on your back you know <laughs> so never mind you're not the only one and th there is comfort in the fact that you know you're not the only one it's not <laughs> super gonna make you sleep well at night but it is like an energy that's already set up. So you have to be very strong to overcome this energy. So this is why okay. I want you to make more connection with the land. I want you to make that power that comes out of the land um, and harness it for yourself. Because any little bit of extra energy and a little bit of extra help that you can get is going to really help spur your own energy to completely propel this monkey off your back. Okay. Now... When when you're looking at what's going on for yourself in terms of um, career, I'd say, you know, things do happen for a reason. At the moment, it's probably not that clear to you why this is all going on. But to summarize why it's going on, it's because what you were involved with no longer holds purpose for you in the long term. What you're going to be doing with your life is going to be in many ways more rewarding and more enriching to other people. But it's a transition that you may not have been able to jump yourself on a normal situation. But by having extreme situations happen to you, which is like suddenly um, complete end of that, that particular job, it spurs you into a time where you start to think about things, you um, contemplate yourself, you contemplate what is the big picture in life. And to have that time to be able to contemplate and then to find the energy and the reserves within yourself to start something new, in theory, sounds very easy, but it is quite difficult. So you've already come quite a distance in this journey, let's call it. So you, in your own mind, things didn't work out the way that you had planned them. But what right. I'm trying to show you is that it, just because you didn't plan it doesn't mean that it's not going to work out for you. Okay. For you to take that next step, something dramatic had to happen. And this is dramatic. You know, It's a definite huge change in circumstances. But at the same okay. time, it's also making you contemplate what it is that you want to do, not just what you could do, but what it is that you want to do. Like you talk about these projects that you've started um, recently that you have, um, was it jewelry making and um, uh, I forget the other one now. Um, it, but to we, have, we have red clay all over our land and I was building kind of a, I call it a hippie hut, but it's a meditation hut. And when we think the post, I found a whole bunch of red clay. So I got excited and said, oh my gosh, you know, this is amazing. So I, I played with it and I had been making incense burners, um, mm -hmm. you know, just with the clay and water and then, you know, put them on our fire pit. And when they're done, I, I've been painting them and um, I find it very um, cathartic. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to throw an idea out there that's going to challenge you a bit to, to things that you may not have thought about. But okay. have you ever considered hosting, like, um, ceremonies or event-type things or weekend workshops where people come and they learn to grow? Yes. What yes, has, actually... What, we were just excellent, we were excellent. just talking about that. We were just <laughs> talking about that. 
<laughs> you know, we were talking about it being twofold. Um, I have a passion for working with, you know, adults and youth with autism. Um, so we thought about having, you know, like a little camp where they come on the property and they do something that's therapeutic for them, um, you know, where we can teach them social skills. They can learn, they can learn some type of um, like work ethic. Mm-hmm. Um, but also do something that is dealing with um, animals or just giving them some confidence. And we also thought about just doing that. Obviously, we're <laughs> newbies, but I'd like to get to the point where we can teach people, hey, you guys can make a garden. Like, we have three acres. It's not like we have 80 acres, but, mm-hmm. you know, we can have enough, you know, we have enough land. And even, you know, if you have barely any, you can still live as sustainable as self-sustainably as possible. Mm, mm. I love it. I really love it. I am really psyched that you're this far. <laughs> Thank you're you. Just telling that monkey, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the idea. I really do. Because for me, you know, people coming and you having ceremony, you having growth, you having weekends, um, integration, it is totally up your alley and somewhere that you can take as far as you want to go. You really can. It okay. would require you to be organized. That is all. And, okay. you know, when you want to be organized, you can be. But sometimes yeah. you're in that, oh, you know, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Start writing notes. Do structure. Think about how you develop it. But have okay. confidence your concept is fantastic. It really is. And it's going to be one of those things, like you build it, they will come. It really is. It really is. Oh, and they will. Ha- the word of mouth will be very effective. It really will. You won't have to do much promoting. You'll have to do a little bit just to get people to be aware of it, and the rest will happen for you. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I that's do love like, it. I love it too, and... I've been thinking about doing something like that for the last couple of years, and I, I guess I feel like I have to do a lot of work on myself first before I try to help other people. And last thing I ever want to do is try to well, help someone when I know I need to work so on much, myself. It's not so much whether or not you need to do lots of work on yourself. It's more about what you have to offer for others. And it's really, in a way, they're two separate things. Your own self-development is one thing. What you can do for others is a completely different thing. So don't sort of mix them up too much in that sense. Think of it more that they're separate entities. Um, Okay. One of the things that you will now, even I can see this now, your energy is already changing. Now that we've already talked about this, you will already see why this year has happened the way it's happened. Because if things hadn't happened like this, you would never get to this point. Even if I and Andrew told you you should go and do this and everything hadn't happened, you'd be like, yeah, that's a nice little pipe dream, but it it (laughs) wouldn't get you to the point you're at now, right? And that's already how much self-development do you think you've got to be at that point. Don't discount what's happened to you and where you've come this year. It's already big. You're just not seeing how big it is. Okay. You know, and it's easy to look at ourselves and think, oh, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't do this. I didn't do that, you know, because we're all very, you know, not all of us, but some of us very humble and, you know, you you keep thinking there's more that you need to do when in in this case, you've already done a lot. Sit down, recognize it, pat yourself on the back. You've come a long way. (laughs) Now, next steps. Right, right. Wow. That's so very helpful. Thank you so much, Kathy. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It was really great to be able to talk to you and share this with you. I'm just so psyched that you're already at that (laughs) point. I thought maybe I'd take another few weeks to get into the concept, but great. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's just, you know, I've always always been a dreamer and thought about how I can mesh all of my passions together and it benefits somebody else, but to actually have you like corroborate and um, to inspire, I mean, it really does. It really means a lot to me. It means that I really need to follow my intuition more than I have in the past. Yes, yes. Hang on, Melissa. That's the music. Just hold on. We'll get back to you after this break. 
Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us in Adventures in Reality with myself, Kathy Ma, and uh, normally Andrew Bartzis, the Galactic Historian, but he is not here today as he has preparing for his event that is in early September, which we're all just absolutely waiting for. Uh, so he will be back next week. So all things galactic will have to wait till next week. And for those of you that are trying to call in, please be patient. You need to Skype request Laura Lee Solomon. And you need to add her to your Skype contact as she is the one that puts you through. And she must accept and confirm you on her Skype account, uh, sorry, her Skype contact list. So when you do request it, please look for the little red dot and respond to Laura. And for those of you that want to call in, the number is... 956-217-0261 or the station which is 357-688-2902 and Laura will put you through as long as she can. We do get an incredible amount of calls and Skype calls as well so if you finding the lines are busy or you can't get through please be patient because we really do literally have hundreds of people calling in and Laura will try and get to you when she can. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Andrew is offering a free video series called Living the Mystical Life Daily. He shows you some tools and gives you knowledge about how to have mystical experiences in your everyday life. So sign up for free at andrewbasis.com. Just put your name and email when you get to the page and you'll receive the verse video right away. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's been so supportive of my new website, which is Kathy's Pearls of Wisdom com. That's Kathy with a K. You've all been really great and been emailing in some really wonderful comments. So thank you so much for that. And remember, if you want to get a private session with Andrew or myself, you can contact Tanok at Tanok at GalacticHistorian.com. That's T-E-N-O-C-H at GalacticHistorian.com. And we'll be able to get to the bottom of your issues and help you see a better way ahead. Um, so, let me see. Melissa, are you still there? I am. Great. So, we were talking about your wonderful new project that you're <laughs> going to embark upon. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that sounds absolutely wonderful. Do you have another question you would like to ask? Um, yeah, and I'll try to make it quick. Um, you know, my I have a family member in my life who, in the last couple of years, has been a roller coaster up and down, up and down, up and down. And um, you know, we're kind of helping her and one of her friends out right now. They had lost their house. And she's coming back from a trip out of state to visit the rest of our family. And I'm very apprehensive about when she comes back. Um, this person, I, I love her with all my heart. <laughs> she's my mom. Um, but she can be very toxic. And I have a lot of trepidation about when she comes back and how I'm going to handle the situation. Um, I can be somewhat of an enabler <laughs> mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to sacrifice my own happiness and the life that we, my fiance and I have built for us here, um, because of the drama and the, um, taking attitude that she has, she has an ability to, to come between people, unfortunately. And I know there's a good person deep down inside that she's had a very, very hard life and has made a lot of bad decisions like us all. Um, and I just really am praying that when she comes back, that it is not nearly as bad as it has been the last couple of years. And I just, I'm just very, very, very worried. Mm. <clears throat> When I look at her energy, to me, she's, um, mm, what can I, how can I put it? It's like she has a chip on her shoulder, you know. Um, right. Yes, she has had a hard life, but that does not mean that everybody owes her. Um, mm -hmm. The world does not owe her. I mean, we could all say that, but it's not the reality at all. 
the sooner that she can accept that the world doesn't owe her, people don't owe her, the easier her life will be. I think the odds of this happening in the immediate future are not so high, so one must prepare for possibly not a huge amount of change within her. Um, right. When you come to the situation, like say that she's um, a bit more troublesome within your life or your relationships with other people, I would say that one thing you really need to make clear to her is back off. Um, because you don't say back off and the pure shock of you saying back off <laughs> would right, probably right. make her go, Ooh! <laughs> and stop her. <laughs> You know, for a short time, not forever, but a short time. Um, but you really need to set up that boundaries with her. And yes, I get that she's your mom and, you know, the love and that relationship is there. But she also has to honor you as a person. She has to honor people in your life um, for who they are and the relationships that you have. And think of it more like training a child. To train a child to do something or to change their behavior, you must make lessons very simple for them. And this is kind of what you have to do for her. Saying back off is one thing. Another is almost slap on the hand when she does something naughty. And slap on the hand could be as simple as don't call me this week because I'm very upset with you. If you want to call me next week, you can, but we will not discuss this issue again. You know, it's that kind of hard line that you have to take with her. And I don't mean tough love. It's more hard line. Because okay. the more that you can do that with her, the more that she will learn there are boundaries. She might not respect the boundaries, but she'll think twice before crossing that particular boundary again. And that's really okay. all you need is that breathing space. Because <coughs> there's going to be other stuff anyway. But even to be able to affect a small amount of change in your relationship with her and the behavior that she um, uses with you will enhance your relationship with her. Um, another thing that you really need to recognize for her is that the odds are she's not going to change much over the next few years. So it's more no, about I wouldn't how, so. yeah, how are you going to teach her as the young child that this is the way she needs to behave around you and use that kind of ideology with her. Um, okay. And even if you find yourself speaking a little bit condescending, like, do you understand me, mum? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that's what it takes to get your point across and if she huffs and hangs up, she'll huff and hang up, she'll call back, no big deal. But you have to do whatever it is that you can do to reclaim that space and that energy that she's trying to get in. Think of yourself the as a... One of the problems, Kathy, one of the problems is, sorry to interrupt you, is she's going to be staying with us. And we, this is supposed to be a temporary thing because she has already crossed every single boundary, every boundary that I've ever had with her and made my life for about a year uh, pretty miserable. I mean, I tried and tried and tried, but I just was in tears all the time. And she's going to be staying with us, but she doesn't, she, she knows how to take care of herself, but she chooses not to. So I'm worried about how to stay within my own self and not allowing her energy to affect not only me, but my fiance too. Mm. When you say I she's wish going it was to stay with you, do you mean in the same um, structure or on the same piece no. of land? No. On the same piece of land, they have, they lost their house and they bought an RV and, um, her roommate is out of work. He's disabled. And she went out of state to see my sisters and is ha just having a fun time. And when she comes back, she's going to go back to her part-time job. But if I, if I allow it, she'll stay here forever, mm. you know? And she doesn't, she's a person that has to be entertained 24 seven. And I'm, I like, I'm an introvert. I like a lot of alone time mm. and I just am really worried about how do I stay strong and not get upset and not cry and not be hurt and not 
feel used and not mm-hmm. respected, but still feel like I'm being a good person and doing everything that I can to try to help somebody who's in an unfortunate situation. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll go back to the back off strategy. Like, okay. you need to write, like, um, imagine you have a big whiteboard, okay, and it's like a timetable. You have every day on your timetable. You block off times that she is not to talk to you. She is not to come to your place. She is not to this. She is not to call because that is your creative time. Call it whatever you want, but these are the times that you are available and highlight them in a color. These are the times I'm available for conversation. These are the times I'm available for a meal. These are the times I'm available for a phone call, whatever it is. Think of it, same thing. It's like a child. You have to show her a timetable and she has to honor it. If she can't honor the timetable, then no need to talk to her that day. I mean, you're going to have to be strict about it. And at the same time, you can say to her, look, I love you. You're my mother. I'll have you here for two months. And then two months, you go wherever. Sister, friend, I don't care. But you're here for two months and then you're off for two months. You make that schedule for her and you say, it's because I need that creative stuff. I need my space. I'm giving you two months notice. So you will have a trip wherever it is. Doesn't bother me where it is. And then you can come back after two months. Okay. You set that timetable for her. And when it comes close to the day, you say, oh, so you'll be off in 10 days. Have you started packing? Have you got all the food? Do you need groceries? Do you want me to make you some bread? <laughs> you know. No, that sounds like just that's, that's so me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you need to do. And uh, keep thinking of it. It's like a child. You have to train her okay. like you would a child. Because she right. is old okay. enough, she can cope. As long as you give mm. her notice, you give her structure, she can follow it. Whether she chooses to follow it is a different story. Yeah. But she can. Okay. I know it's gonna you're gonna feel mean and tough, but you gotta think boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You know, what are you prepared to risk if she doesn't stick to that? Well, it would be our relationship, you know. It got to the point last time where I tried to set so many boundaries with her and mm-hmm. talk to her and tell her this is how it is, this is how it is, and she just kept you know, mm-hmm. there crossing all of my boundaries and then I finally had to say you have to leave you ha- you cannot be you know disrespecting my household in the way that you are so you need to leave and I finally you know started talking to her again after almost a year and I find myself back in the same situation just with a lot of more a lot more um, trepidation now mm. <laughs> so at the end of the day you're not prepared to risk <laughs> what you have and you have no. to keep reminding yourself, this is what you're going to have to risk if she doesn't follow. So she's old yeah. enough. She can do it. You're giving her plenty of notice. She's completely capable of. So every time that she steps on that boundary and you feel weak, you think, am I prepared to risk this? Because that will make you say, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to find that inner strength. No, 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 here, I'm going to draw that boundary down on the ground. <laughs> I'm going to get paint out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but even if it took that, that's what it takes, you know, okay. because you have to keep showing yourself what are you prepared to risk if you don't. Okay. You know, make it seem life or death in your decision making to shock your mind into supporting what you want to do. Okay. Well, that was very helpful. Thank you so much. I appreciate. I apologize for taking so much time. I know you oh, have other callers. But no, I really- it was wonderful <laughs> to talk to you, Melissa. Thank you so much for calling. Yes, Kathy. Thank you. I am. I'm, I'm glad that you're feeling better. Um, I was listening earlier about the spider incident, and I'm just glad that everything is a little better for you now. I know. <laughs> It's like they have my address. They look me up and they come with their little suitcase and they're moving in. I'm going to have to put my bag 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I learn from my own words. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kathy, so very much. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. All righty. Um, Bye-bye. What a great call. Thank you so much, Melissa, for calling in and sharing all that with us. We can all learn so much from that. Boundaries, always boundaries, never an easy thing to do. <laughs> okay, our next call is 646. Are you there? Hello? Hi. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hi, uh, my name is Jason. I'm calling in from New Jersey. Ah, New Jersey. What kind of questions do you have, Jason? Uh, yes. Uh, so I have more of a career slash business question. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still in college. I'm heading into my senior year, mm -hmm. um, and I'm majoring in biology. And um, yeah, I had already had a reading with Andrew, <clears throat> and he told me to do some cranial sacral therapy, and maybe that's the path for me. So I took uh, I took the courses. Mm -hmm. Um, but because there's an issue be because, um, to be licensed in New Jersey, I have to have some type of, you know, another manual touch license, some license that I, gives me a permission to touch a person's body. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I know that for my, I guess, life purpose, I'm supposed to be a healer. Uh, I'm just a bit confused because I don't know what to do with this biology degree after graduation, honestly. And um, whether it's cranial sacral, if I should continue doing it or do it on the side and something else, because I'm also an energy healer. I do pranic healing. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just like some advice on that. Mm. Wow. You have a lot of little abilities here and there all interspersed throughout time. <laughs> <laughs> I look at your energy and to me it's like, you know, you could almost do anything. Well, maybe not design spaceships, but <laughs> but pretty much do anything. Like I, mm -hmm. I love what you've been doing. I love where you're coming. Um, you definitely have a lot of awareness, a lot of awakening that's been going on. Um, mm -hmm. things are waking up inside your brain and it's like they're just sparking synapse, synapse, you know. Um mm -hmm. And you're, you know, it's like you're, you're putting your hand going, I'm here, I'm here, what, you know, right. hello, hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I look at with the course that you're doing at school, um, the biology, mm -hmm. is do you, do you also do a lot of chemistry that's related with that? Yes. Okay, because I'm seeing a lot of formulas, so, okay, that makes sense then. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you been considering, like, inventing something that's chemically based? Uh, no, actually. Because to me, it looks like, you, you know, that's kind of where you're going to go with this. Um, okay. And it's almost like um, herbal remedies. Like, mm, I know okay. that sounds weird, but, uh, you know, because I'm really not super great at chemistry. So, mm -hmm. I'm just seeing lots of formulas and um, okay. and colors and crystals and liquid and forming mm -hmm. all together stuff. But okay. it's like you have, I think this year you will come across a lot of stuff that makes sense to you, whether mm -hmm. it's um, herbal stuff, um, essential oils, um, essences, all things like that. But you mm -hmm. seem to, number one, you have an affinity with it because it makes sense to you even before you know all about it. Like I could show okay. you a flower of something and you say, oh, that's because it's got bloody blah properties. And I'd be like, it does? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you just, you have an affinity with things like that. So yeah. innately you seem to know what goes with what and how it can help um, in certain instances or even just in, let's say, general health. Or, um, mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of what you're going to be, I'm just going to call it inventing. I don't know another good word. Creating, inventive creating, is mm -hmm. stuff that is involved with people that seem depressed. 
it's like a okay. general malaise, you know, like mm-hmm. you, just, you, you seem to come across a lot of people that are like, oh, well, you know, yeah, everything's okay in my life, but, you know, I don't know, I just kind of feel down and, you know, I don't see anything ahead of me and, and you're like, oh, but look at this and look at that and, and they're like, yeah, but I don't know, I just don't have any energy in the morning and, you know, I get to the afternoon and I just seem to, like, uh, depressed and etc. Mm. Um, and you almost have that innate ability to understand what it is they need. You know, it's almost like a shot of adrenaline for someone who has got no energy. It's like mm. a, a shot of happiness for someone who's just had a great tragedy in their life, but you couldn't possibly have known that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's things like that that you will have a great affinity with. Um, mm-hmm. So, okay, that's probably a very big topic. And mm-hmm. if you haven't quite discovered all that yet, I'm going to leave yeah. that section there because okay. <laughs> I don't want to get too enthusiastic about yeah. it. <laughs> um, but in terms of, um, you know, what you're going to be doing with this degree, where you're going to be going mm-hmm. with that, that's kind mm-hmm. of where I see. So I do think you are going to okay. use it. Um, okay. You're going to harness it. And I think this year you're already going to discover what you're going to do with that. It okay. won't be the Great. traditional sense of you know what all your um, co- uh, not colleagues, what your fellow students are doing, but it will make sense for you. Okay. Um, and then going back to the healing side of things, I think mm-hmm. that you will find that the cranial sacral has been a really great basis for mm-hmm. where you want to go with things. But I think mm-hmm. in many forms, it's almost like it's not enough for you because right, you right. want to do more. Um, yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, it, it's like the, the changes that you can um, help with. The, oh, sorry, the music's coming up. Can you just hold okay. on and we'll get back to this? Sure. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to Adventures into Reality with myself, Kathy Ma. And remember, if you want to get a private session with Andrew or myself, please contact Tanok at tanok at galactichistorian.com. That's T-E-N-O-C-H at galactichistorian.com. And if you want to learn more about me, please check out my website, which is kathyspearlsofwisdom.com. That's Kathy with a K. Uh, Jason, are you still there? Yes. Great. One of the things I was looking at for you is because it seems like you want to get more let's say, nitty-gritty into things that are going on in people's mm-hmm. body. One of the things I th- think that you'll find very interesting is the somatic healing. Have you heard yes. of that? Yes. Have you done that before? Um, I did not take the class yet, but I plan on taking it. Good, because I think that's where you'll find that things really start to make sense for you mm. because you really have that innate ability to understand where releasing is coming from and what Mm -hmm. it needs to mm, help it foster it into a more positive mm, Mm -hmm. outcome for that person, let's call it. Um, I think that you'll find that that would really springboard you into where you want to go because you're the type of person that you need many many disciplines, I suppose, behind you to feel Mm -hmm. fully confident in that you can approach the whole Mm, Um, and Mm -hmm. yeah well it's it's almost like you know you're like I can do you know I keep going back to scientist (laughs) (laughs) you know it's like you're a mad scientist and you've just got all this stuff access to you and that's Mm -hmm. what helps you create and when you have all those things at your fingertips you will create something that is amazing I don't even think it has a name yet because you haven't created it yet (laughs) I really like where you're going with this. So I'm glad that you already have heard about it and you're thinking about doing it because this will really springboard you into other Mm -hmm. things that you will find more encompassing. And I think Mm -hmm. the people that you will meet when you do this are going to Mm -hmm. be people that you will keep with with you for a lot of your life because it's the friendships that you make and the sharing of minds that really Mm -hmm. broadens your horizons with this. Right. Okay. Thank you. So you're definitely on the right track. I love where you're going. Please okay. check back with us in like three or six months because I want to hear where you've got with this because I know the rest of the year is going to be just super exciting. 
awesome. I definitely will. Good, good. Is there something else you'd like to ask? Uh, yes. So um, I spoke that I was um, doing an energy healing called pranic healing. Mm-hmm. So um, we, uh, so I have two other partners that we kind of created our own like website and our own business, and we recently just did a weekend workshop at uh, one of my partner's home, and um, it wasn't as great as we wanted, mm-hmm. uh, but it was what, our first w- workshop, and we created our business maybe like two weeks prior. So I was just wondering um, if you have any advice for our business and what type of model would work best for its future growth. Mm-hmm. I like what you're doing. Um, I think what you need is structure. Uh, okay. the, one of the reasons that the workshop was not as successful as you would want was mm-hmm. the lack of structure. But then okay. if you hadn't done it before, it's very difficult to have structure. It's always trial and error. So right. don't be disheartened over that. So I'd like you to do more structure within the actual coursework that you're going to do. And mm-hmm. I also would like you to have more structure so that people understand where this is going. Because okay. in a sense, they understand the basic concept of what you're trying to do, but they don't mm-hmm. understand where this is going to go. Okay. So th- they need um, more of your long-term vision, let's say. Mm, I see. Right, and one way that you are going to um, be able to harness more students is I want you to make them part of the experience with you. I want you to go out to them and say, "We're building this. We need mm-hmm. feedback. We need support. Please let us know what it is that you're looking for. What it is that your feedback is, because the more that you involve them, the more mm-hmm. this will grow." Okay. Because at the moment you're you're more focused. You have been more focused on. I will show you. I will teach you. I will bring this to you, rather than mm-hmm. involving them within that energy. Do you see what I mean? It's like that exchange yes, and that yes. mingling. Because mm-hmm. the more you mingle, the more success you will have with this. Okay. And I I really like what you're doing. I think also you need more content on your website. Right. Okay. More, more stories as well as to how this can help me. Like if I go to your website and I look and I say, well, I'm not sure this is for me. Um, Mm -hmm. I have X, Y, Z issue. Does this really help Mm -hmm. me or not? So you need more stories that show people if you have this issue, this can, you can achieve this. If you have these kind of issues, you can achieve this. Or if you're just interested in stuff like that, you know, make it more personal, more information. In your instance, more information is better even though you might think it's messy, not as clean lines, Mm -hmm. it's better for the person that's going to the site. Okay. I really like the site a lot. So you have two partners, is it? Yes. And would you say one of them is really not pulling their weight so much? Um, I guess a a little bit, yeah. I think you need to address that. Um, okay. It's never easy, never easy to have that conversation with someone. But right. once you do say it and all the hurt feelings are out of the way, mm-hmm. then you can discuss next best steps to produce what you all would like. Mm-hmm. And okay. possibly you may find out that one of the issues that this person had is something that you couldn't have predicted. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they're a lot shyer than you realized. And they just okay. couldn't get the words out because they, they felt like they were stuttering. <laughs> okay. You know, sometimes the, the solution, not the solution, but the, the reason things happen are not the reasons that you think. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. But okay. especially at this beginning time, you really mm-hmm. have to be honest. And if you think it's been harsh, think about mm-hmm. how it's going to feel if you go six months and you're still feeling like this. Then it's going to get harsh. Okay. Right, and this person can take it, so don't be concerned mm-hmm. about that. Okay. Mm. No, I love it. I love it. So, what is the website name? Uh, it's a bit long. Um, it's called MCKS Pranic Healing Services dot com. Ooh, yes, that is very long. Doesn't yeah. flow right off the tongue, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. 
Um, we were trying to find the right domain names. Well, but most of them were taken. Um, and uh, MCKS is the it's the initials for the founder, Master Choa Koksui. So originally we wanted product healing services, but it was taken. So we we just uh, well, one of our partners really wanted to pay respect to uh, the founder. So he always likes putting the initials in front of everything. So that's what we went with. You know, there are other ways that you can pay respect to founders. You can okay. have a whole spiel on one mm-hmm. whole page of your website. Yes, that's that's what we are trying to build too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. the truth is, a, a website like that, I'm not going to remember it. And yeah, that's I've that's got a pretty good memory. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you want to find something that is easier for people to retain in their head. And even if you have a couple of websites and you point them all to the, uh, sorry, a couple of domain names and you point them to the same website, that possibly is one solution as well. And Mm -hmm. use something that's simpler as the the main marketing website. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it was originally called Pranic Healing Service without the S in services. Uh, but one of my partners didn't really like it, and he decided to change it. And, um, like, for me, I, I feel like I know how, you know, the flow of energy, like, with names and what it will bring. And I just, it didn't feel, like, making it longer didn't feel right to me. And the thing with me is, like, I'm a people pleaser. So if if I can make somebody happy, I won't be honest. And I think that's one of my uh, things I have to work on is that... Mm-hmm. I, I would rather make someone happy than give my best input on how to make like mm. anything successful. Um, I understand. Yes, it's yeah. it's difficult when you're a people pleaser. Yeah, Think of it like yeah. this: the people pleaser doesn't equate to money in the bank. Right. 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 You want mm-hmm. people to find your site. You want p- make it easy. This is a new business. You have to use a domain name that is easy for people to remember. Okay. So even if you don't go with any of the names that you've used mm-hmm. and come up with something completely different, mm-hmm. your main goal is to capture interest and memory of retention in one right. domain name. Right. So definitely I would go back to the uh, design board with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for calling, Jason. It's been great talking to you. Do call back and let us know how things are going. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kathy. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, what an interesting call. I look forward to his news closer to the end of the year. It's going to be so exciting. Okay, our next caller, uh, Teresa, are you there? Teresa? Yes. Hi. Yes, Hi. I'm here. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Oh, Pennsylvania. What kind of questions do you have? Well, thank you, um, Laura and Kathy, for taking my call. Um, just a, a brief um, explanation of the reason for my call. I, I've just left um, a severely emotionally abusive marriage of 16 years with a very extreme, extreme person. Um, I consider myself to you know, have an intellectual understanding of the workings of our relationship, um, psychology psychologically, energetically, but there's just something unconscious in my, in myself that I just can't seem to pinpoint that I'm suffering so deeply from. Um, just any, any insight into my energy that you could give me would be greatly appreciated. Do you mean that you're a little bit confused as to why you would go through this for so long? Um, I feel like I, I know, I think I know this and I think I'm working on myself, but it's just never enough. And the hold is just so great over me that I, I just, I'm fearful. I just don't know how to, to push past this. Mm, mm, okay. When I look at your energy, to me, it's almost like in many ways, I could say that you were fated to go through this relationship. I mean, that's not anything any of us wants to hear because it was not a very pleasant relationship. But right. with what you were brought up, you know, the way that you have 
been formed since birth to then and to now, it's almost like you didn't have many chances to avoid this because the in, in many ways it's like to have that domination over you is familiar and um, uh, I, I don't really want to use the word makes you feel safe because obviously it doesn't make you feel safe but in a sense it does because that's the way you've um, been formed, that's the way you've been engineered. Um, the reason that you've stayed in this relationship so long is that I think people around you really did not truly understand what you were going through. Like I'm sure you would look back in your past and you probably had told people um, here and there, you, you know, not that you're not happy but something's happening to you and, and this and that and they probably said, are you kidding? I think you're exaggerating. I mean, he's so nice and this and that. And, and every time you've tried to break out a little bit, you've been put back in that box and made to feel like that's what you are worthy of. That is what is right. You are exaggerating your situation because no one else can see it. And when you're in that kind of situation and every time you try and break out of it and the reinforcing opinions or um, words to you keep putting you there, it's very, um, uh, debilitating to your own self-confidence, your own self-esteem and you start to question whether or not you have imagined that this, this is like not okay or this is too extreme or whether you've exaggerated in your mind and it's taken an incredible amount of strength on your behalf to break free even though this is not the popular decision or popular choice by everyone in your energy. Um, so I applaud you on being able to take that step because I can see how hard it's been for you and I mean my heart cries for you because I can see how how hard and how horrible this has been. But one thing you need to start to recognize about yourself is you have become strong. It may have taken you a long time to become strong but you are strong. You're not as strong as you need to be, you're not as strong as you want to be but you've taken giant steps forward. You need to applaud yourself for what, what you have done, the progress you have made, and the fact that you can pull yourself up and recognize that your self-esteem is worthy of something. Because when no one else is telling you it's worthy of something, it's very difficult to believe it and to know it and to feel it in every cell of your body. One of the things that you will also find is that you will keep falling back on did I do the right thing, did I do the right thing, maybe I did exaggerate in my mind and that is only fear, fear of the unknown, fear of striving forward and fear of being on your own striving forward. But you are not alone, trust me in that you are not alone. You are not the only person that has these emotions, I'm, I can tell you with great certainty that there are hundreds of people listening to this show that know exactly how you feel. You are not alone. Always remember that. What you did was you have strived out for yourself. You're trying to create, uh, sorry, you're trying to create a positive path for your future. You have total confidence in yourself that you have done that. Every time you feel weak, you think back to what we're talking about and how you're honoring yourself now by moving forward, how you're honoring yourself by not letting other people do things to you. Does that make sense for you? Wow, it makes complete and total sense. Thank you. Yeah. It's very, very difficult place to be in where you are right now and it will get a little bit harder before it gets easier. So don't be disheartened. But by the end of the year, you will look back at this and you won't believe that you stayed that long. And strength is built day by day. It takes patience and it takes nurturing. So don't chastise yourself if you don't jump in straight into strength. Don't chastise yourself if you have days where you feel weak and you start to think about maybe it would have been better if I had stayed. 
every time that happens, just remember, go back inside your resources, inside your mind, inside your body and find that inner strength. Remember that self-esteem because you are worthy. You are worthy of great love. You are worthy of absolute unconditional love. You are worthy of good things happening to you. You are worthy of good and positive relationships in your life. It is your right and you will claim that and you will claim that this lifetime. In fact, by next year, you will be in a place where you can't even recognize yourself, but you will know that you did it. You did it yourself, you did it on your own and you did it because you are strong. Thank you so, so much. Oh, you are so welcome. I salute you. What you have done is not easy. And to be able to step out of that is definitely not easy. Now you have to focus on yourself, your self-esteem. Remember, you are worthy of all these good things. Don't listen to any naysayers. If they are not positive and pro you, you just cut them out of your life for now. And it doesn't matter who they are. Everyone that's involved with your life now has to be pro you. That is the only way to go. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. What else is going on for you? Um, the, the things really looming over me right now are um, my two children. Mm -hmm. I want to protect them from this person. Mm -hmm. And um, I've become completely financially dependent on this person who's who just really abandoned us, you know, to fend for ourselves. But as hard as it gets, I'm not going to reach out to that person for help. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I just wonder, I mean, right now I can't, I can't see any, it, it just seems so so much doom and gloom um if i just keep pushing forward like i have been um, will everything be okay for me and my boys okay when i look at what's coming up for you i really like what's coming up okay so number one good things are coming always remember that when it comes to finances i think you will find that in fact you will be offered assistance by at least two people all you have to do is ask and by two people i mean not the guy okay we'll remove him from the picture no asking him anything um, but you just have to ask and asking is not always easy but sometimes you need help it doesn't mean that you're weak it just means that you need help we all need help sometimes and you will find you also have help and support in the most unexpected places and by that I mean it's going to be someone new that you meet that you just happen to mention something and they've got something that you can do. They might have a part-time job. They might have a, um, a place that you can stay for a month. You know, it's going to be all these really weird things will happen for you. And you're going to look back at this time and think, wow, you know what? It's kind of like I really put it out there. I asked and I got it. I didn't get exactly what I thought I was asking for, but the solution is good. So don't be afraid to ask. One of the things you can do for yourself every day is when you get up and you do your grounding and then you're starting to create your day, you're creating your abundance, put it in your abundance and make it very generic. Don't make it very specific. Like say, um, you, you, for example, you're like, well, you know, I really need to create some financial abundance for the next two weeks because I have a lot of bills I need to pay and this and that. So rather than say in your mind, I need to get a job and it has to earn, you know, earn this much money per month, say to yourself, universe, help me. I need to create some financial abundance so that I and my kids will be okay for these two weeks. However that works, please help me create that abundance and that financial abundance. Visualize it. Do it every morning and every night because your mind is very, very powerful. I look at your energy and you're just full of creative energy. You put it out there, you will create it. Thank you. I definitely will be doing that. Mm. And I really do think you will find that a lot of solutions come to you and, and it's going to be in weird places. You 
only have to put it out there. You only have to ask. And it's not a sign of weakness asking, you know. Like, even me, I mean, I, I'm new to this country. Sometimes I don't know things. I have to ask people. It's, I, I feel so ridiculous, you know. Even like, I'm not even sure where the supermarket is or this or that, <laughs> you know. So you ask. But people, they react well. You just think it's weird or you feel inadequate because you don't know it and you think you should. But other people don't see it like that. So don't be afraid to ask. Okay. Put it that out there. Good. I will do that. I will. Mm. Mm. And how old are your kids now? I have a 15-year-old son and an eight-month-old baby. Mm. <laughs> ah, ah, nothing like a <laughs> two polar differences spectrum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah. Okay, I look at the older child and I think that, you know, things will be a little bit tougher this year, but I think don't um, don't worry about so much that it was from what happened. It's that time of year. It's that time of the kid's life. At that age, a lot of stuff goes on, which is irrelevant to home life uh, and everything else. So if there are some issues that are coming up which you're worried about for him, they will sort themselves out. Think of it just, you know, 15, 16, it's going to happen. Yes. May as well happen now than later. Okay. Um, but it will work out. So whatever it is, that the issues that come up, don't worry. He will sort them out. Life will take over and he will learn and he will grow. Thank you. When it comes to the younger one, I'd say that possibly over the next 12 months, you may find that there is a little bit of illness, like a lot of coughing or wheezing or... Um, breathing, respiratory kind of issues. To me, a lot of it is just the environment that the child is in. Um, and, you know, often you can't do much about environment, you know, like if there's pollen in the air or this or that. So just stick with what the traditional remedies are and you will find that it will see him through. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for calling, Teresa. It's been wonderful to talk to you. You too. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it.